Algebra word problems number one, writing an equation from words. This is for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We're going to do consecutive numbers, distance, ratios, and proportions in future videos. So our word problem strategy is we're going to read the problem, then we're going to underline or circle important words or numbers. We're going to make a plan to solve the problem. We're going to figure out which operation to use. Are we going to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? We're going to figure out how we're going to use the information. We're going to turn any unknown amounts into variables, and we're going to use letters that make sense. We're going to make a table or diagram to decipher what we need to do if it's very, very tough and we're confused. We're going to write out our equation. We're going to find the solution, and at the end, we're going to check to make sure we did it correctly by plugging our answer into the equation to see if it really works. So each word problem gives us clue words to write an equation. So if you see clue words like the sum of 5 and 6, that means 5 plus 6. It's the sum, so we know it's addition. The sum of a number in 5, it's addition, and we can use x or n to take the place of the number, and we have plus 5. A number 27 greater than another number tells us that it's going to add 27, and we can use x for our first number and y for the another number that tells us it's a second number. The difference of 6 and 9, difference tells us it's subtraction. The difference of 9 and 6, we're going to subtract 6 from 9. The difference of a number in 6, we're going to use n to represent the number, or x, and difference tells us it's subtraction, so we've got n minus 6. A number 27 less than another number. So we've got a number, x, that is 27 less, so we're going to take away 27, and it says another number, so we need a different variable. So we'll use y. If it says 3 times a number, we can just use 3x, or 3y, or 3n, whatever variable you need. 3 times a number that is half of a number of another number. We know it's 3 times a number, just like this one, so we've got 3x, but it's half of another number, we can put it as a fraction over 2 to show division. And the another number is a y. Now, another way to have done this would be to multiply it by a half, wouldn't it? We could do half times 3x, because that would have been the same thing as half of that number that is 3 times it, right? 2 thirds of a number is 2 thirds x. 2 thirds times a number, see? If it says the product of 8 and a number, well, product is the answer to multiplication, so we know it's 8 times something, 8 times a number, 8 times x or y or n. The quotient of 25 and a number, quotient tells us it's division, and we know fractions are division, little division problems, so if it's, if it's the quotient of 25 and a number, we could put 25 over x. We also could have said 25 divided by x equals y, right? 15 more than a number, well, x is our number, and we need to add 15. It's more. It's 15 more than this number. 6 less than a number would be that number minus 6. It's less than. A number added to 7 would be a number x plus 7. A number increased by 5 would also be x plus, and then we would just add the 5. A number decreased by 5 would be x minus the 5. A number 4 times greater than another number. If it's 4 times, that tells it it's multiplication, and if it's greater than another number, we know there's another number here, see? So we have to use a y. The product of 4 and a number minus 8. Product tells us it's multiplication, four times something, a number x minus 8. So it's four times x minus 8, see? The length, L, is, that tells us equals 20 inches more, plus 20, than twice the width, than two times the width, see? So L is equal to 2w plus 20. See how I did that? And instead of using x and y, I used l and w to represent length and width, because those variables made more sense. If it says 
the sum of 2 times a number and 10, then we know that we're adding, okay? And we've got 2 times a number. So we've got 2x, 2 times some variable, plus 10. And that would make our sum, see? The product of negative 3 and a number is negative 27. So negative 3 times something equals negative 27. If it says 5 greater than half a number, well, it's going to be plus 5 and half of x. So we can say x times a half, or a half times x plus 5, or we could even say x divided by 2 plus 5, because that would still get us half of x. If it says 3 less than a number divided by 8, then we need to have that number x divided by 8, and then we need to take away 3. We also could have done x minus uh, x divided by 8, and then minus 3. We could have written it this way. But this is the more uh, notably used way, okay? 6 less than 1 fourth of a number, well, you would take that number, x, and divide it by 4, and it would be 6 less, minus 6. 3 more than twice a number, well, 3 more tells us 3 plus, and twice a number is 2 times a number, so it's 3 plus 2 times something. The sum of a number divided by another number, well, the sum of a number would be, I'm sorry, sum of a number in 5. So you would have x plus 5, but it's divided by another number, so we put it over the fra with the fraction line, and we put it over y. That's the another number. See that? So that's the sum of a number and 5 divided by another number. All right? So as I said before, for word problem clues about consecutive numbers, distance, ratios, and proportions, those are in the videos coming up. So check those out if you need help with clue words for those. Okay? So... This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many clue words and ways to tell what to write for an algebraic expression, and this is just some of them, okay? So I hope this can help you figure out some word problems that have uh, algebraic equations, and I'll see you next video. Bye.